Hello, and welcome back to more Rusa. We're gonna continue on from last time where we were. Well, were we underground actually? I believe we might be, but I don't remember quite too well. Oh no, we weren't. We were in this place, which we got brought to. Oh, well, that's. N you know what? We're gonna load. Because uh, I went the wrong way, which led me to do, I think, the right way. We're gonna see what this is first. What the? Uh, I don't feel so good. Hey, scribe. Down on the mines. He could use some help. He wants me to tell you that... that Probably the same thing with the deer again. Nerd, are you seeing this? What's wrong with her? What are you talking about? There's nothing here. Oh, I see. Uh, so now we end up here. The clock, it's... Am I losing my mind? Is only Ada seeing this? Listen to me. You think I'm afraid of you? Let me out of this nightmare. This is the end. You talk to him. There is no turning back. Are you sure you want to do this? No. Take your time. What is this place? Who are you? Painted it myself. Beautiful, isn't she? Oh, Jeremy's like a like a not it's not actually Jeremy, it's it's a projection of him by Rusa, isn't it? No, what the hell is going on? There's a reindeer up there. Don't go up. It's for your own good. Go up. Don't say I didn't warn you. Roses are red, violets are blue, everyone is dead, and so are you. Fair enough, I got warned, and so did you. So if you got jump scared by that, it's on you. Alright, now we're gonna get out of here. Look at me, Ada. This is what we need. Ada looks around herself. Hey, where'd you go? Ada shifts her gaze towards the strange creature. Wait a minute, those clothes. Nerd, is that really you? Ada. Hurts. Please help. What happened to you? Chain. Hurts. Nerd, how do we get out of here? What the hell is going on? Madeline. So nice to see you. Can't move. Uh-oh. Looks like Jeremiah got a boo-boo. And why would you hurt him like that, young lady? <coughs> My voice, goddammit. Me? You were the one that provoked the chain, remember? You see, the chain was never meant for a different species. It causes... complications. The molecular level tends to get destroyed in a very painful way. Radiation. What are you talking about? Imagine a powerful spell. We throw billions of very tiny daggers at your enemy. They pass through the body, shooting every part of it. The end result is you turning it is tur is wait. The end result is you turning into pudding. Don't worry, it can't affect you and me. Just wait a couple of days, and once he dies, you'll be free. I almost forgot. Here is your book. The codex. Just take it and leave. What are you, why are you doing this? You two are meddling with things you do not understand. Together you are a very powerful, yet unpredictable force. I don't like unpredictable. Take the book and leave. I won't beat myself, young lady. No. No. But it may be annoying, but he but nobody deserves a fate this cool. Such a horrible death has no dignity. Also, take your thread and shove it up your ass. Go go jump off a cliff, you damn freak. I see. You know, Adeline, I'm a very patient entity. Resorting to violence is rather uncivilized. However, I have ways to resolve unpredictable problems. Let your rage fester, young lady. That way my problems will resolve themselves. 
Do you understand, Adeline? Ada. Huh? What? Where'd that freak go? Wait, nerd. You're back to normal. Yeah, you punched me pretty hard. I landed in the bushes nearby and got knocked out. I woke up to loud noises coming from the house. Are you alright? Yeah, I... I guess so. Ada slowly looks around the house and lets out a sigh of relief. Yeah, I'm fine. I was just trying to find you. I was worrying that... Worried that... Worried that I got hurt? Ada smacks the smug scribe. Should have punched you harder. I'm joking, I'm joking. Please calm down. Sorry for crashing the party back there. We, uh, messed up at the bar. Eh, it was boring anyway. It, uh, an awkward silence fills the, fills the room. Listen, nerd, the chain. It's going to... We need to break it as soon as possible, got it? After that, we get right down to business. The Ignis Codex. Ah, screw it. Might as well say it now. I know I'm going to wear this, but... Here goes. I need that book because of this. Interesting. I need to figure out that uh, figure this thing out. I don't know what it's for or what the purpose it or what or the purpose it serves. All I know is that whoever can crack this thing open will wield power beyond their wildest dreams. Be careful. If that ring thing breaks open without proper control, it will vaporize the whole forest. Jeremy carefully touches the orb to inspect. She told me, in the northern, for northern forest, you'll find a scribe. Seek his abode, and you'll find the scrolls you need. Somewhere deep in the book lies the answer. He is to, uh, the key to unlocking this thing. I'm sorry, Ada. Damn it. Just a stupid book. How can it be so important to you? Jeremy gives her the book. Take it. Finally. Let's go to Hibiska so we can finally break the chain. Do you have a plan for the rest? Huh? For the rest of the keys. What? You think that measly brook would activate the orb? Well, I was told that... Jeremy ba smacks the orb with his fist. Are you insane? To contain such power, you need an equally powerful barrier. That thing isn't a crystal ball. The Ignis Codex holds just a tiny piece of the puzzle. There are many more books like it. It wipes the sweat off her brow. Panic slowly starts to sink in. Oh yeah? I'll find them all. I'll crack this thing, no ma this thing open no matter what. Even if you manage to find all the needed literature, the orb contains an extremely complex arcane lock. In other words, that thing is activated by drawing a specific array of magic wounds on it. If you're an amateur in these kinds of studies, it would take you decades. Jeremy awkwardly tries to shield himself. A gloomy atmosphere fills the room. Let's go and break that stupid chain. Yada starts walking the door, but Jeremy cuts her off. That's it? Just gonna give up? Spare me, nerd. I know what you're trying to do. There's a line between hope and being a fool. Jeremy shakes his head. No, you have no idea how lucky you really are. What do you mean? I've been studying this stuff for a very long time now. I can already tell you, half of the runes needed. What? The last bits are gonna be tough, but not impossible. With a bit of luck, we're talking up a, a couple of weeks. Hmm. This will be an interesting challenge. Jeremy loses himself in his thoughts. <sighs> Why? Jeremy stops, whisp wh stops whispering to himself and focuses on Ada. Pardon? Someone like me, with all that power. Aren't you afraid? Why help me? After everything I've done, I don't understand. Most of the time, the power of these artifacts is, is greatly exaggerated by myth and legend. But that's not the reason why I'm not afraid. You're from the Dark Marshes, no? I heard about the situation there. I don't know the whole story, just bits and pieces. However, enough to come to the conclusion that there is a discrepancy between you and the denizens in the marshes. That's the reason why I'm not afraid. Also, it would be nice if I if we could be friends. Jeremy and Ada looks at each other for look at each other for a moment. Huh? Show yourself. Ah, biscuits. Moxie? Ahem. Are we talking about our feelings? May Moxie join? Ada swings her arm. Huh. You missed, Ada. Bonk. Thanks, nerd. Don't mention it. You guys stop hitting Moxie in the head. 
Wait a second. Moxie, where's Jin? Huh? Oh, right. Don't sweat it. He woke up and is resting back at the camp. You left a pure, innocent, fluffy boy and a group of shameless vixens. Mm hmm. Moxie's smart. What? Well, that's what she gets. See, I told you her noggin is hollow like a coconut. Coconut? I think that's coming from the door. Jeremy, are you alright? I saw you flying in this direction right before I got knocked out. Easy there, Jen. Everything's alright. Thank goodness. Now that the whole circus is here, we can finally get a move on. Jin searches his pockets. What's wrong? Yeah, sir, it's my locket. It's gone. Jeremy and Ada look at Moxie. Oh, yeah, sure. Let's all look at the pixie rogue. Moxie, yesterday you tried to grab keys from my front pockets while I was still talking to you. It was an accident. My hand slipped. If it was an accident, were you, what, are, what were you trying to grab? Guys, this is silly. I think the locket just fell out while I was running over here. What route did you, route did you take? Same dirt roads that we used to get the pixie camp. Wait, I tripped and fell near the waterfall road. Maybe it fell over there. That's the best we got. Let's go. I'm surprised Ada's not gonna try and, you know, dispute that. I don't know how we shouldn't go there, because it's a waste of time. I am truly surprised. And I also don't remember if I, I did my full outro and, and, and intro and everything and whatever it may be. Uh, skills for Moxie. I'm gonna put... She looks like a healer. A fast healer. Heal over time. Heal. Buff. Debuff, maybe. And let's put any one point in buff and debuff. Put one more in heal and one more in defense. Wait, no, wait, let's just put one in speed. And then gear wise, one thing I didn't realize, and someone said that in the comments, is that you can have multiple weapons. It doesn't require you to have one weapon and one armor. So, you know, I can just grab another weapon if I can find one. Healing and restoration, spell stuff. Yeah, there's no, there's none that are like weapon based. Now I, I wouldn't change this for this. So for now we're gonna stick with this, which is all we have. Uh, where is the? Here we go. This. I'll give her a bit of damage too, you know, with the weapon. That should be good. Let's also save. Here we go. We are probably gonna warp, right? Warp. Uh, tunnel entrance, I think. We go back this way. That's the shopkeep. No, we didn't find your friends yet. Oh, but I know where they are, actually. You tripped and fell near the waterfall, right? So it should be here? Whatever, uh, that's not what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go and do the actual side quest, because I realize now what they meant. Warp, Lord Junction, I believe. Maybe this way then? Oh no, it wasn't this way, it was at the, at the other warp. Warp path. And then it was back and down. I think so. No, this is the house. It's forward and down. Here, right? Did we go here? Guys, wait. There it is. Jin quickly sc scoops the block it up. Thank you, for everyone, for helping me. I promise it won't happen again. Don't worry about it, Jin. Less talking, more walking. We're still an hour away from camp, so... Alright. Oh, I guess more talking, actually. Something wrong? Jeremy glances at the party. Everyone is visibly tired. We've been walking for a while now. How much longer? An hour or so. Paperboy, you said that a half an hour ago. It's either this route or fighting rogue nymphies and forest monsters mothers. No, let's just take five, huh? They use some water. Moxie's hungry. Alright, alright. Let's take a break. Ah, this is the life. Free food. Paperboy, I gotta hand it to you. You really know how to cook. Don't think you're off the hook, Moxie. I'm keeping tabs. Excuse me? 
<laughs> I have to admit, this is really nice. So, Furball, why is that old locket so important to you anyway? Oh, it's because, um, uh-oh, someone has a girlfriend. <laughs> no, it's not a girlfriend, it's just, um, don't worry again, Jin. You don't have to tell us if it makes you feel uncomfortable. It's not that, I just don't want to burn on you guys more. It up punches the ground. Spit it out, Furball. Meowzers, it's my sister. I'm trying to... I'm, I'm looking for my little sister. Oh. Pardon me. Jeremy and Moxie look at Ada and comically gasp in shock. What? Ada, apologizing. Oh, shut up, you two. Don't joke when it comes to family. Hope you find your sister for a ball. Thank you, Miss Ada. Jin, you could have told me. I'd be more than happy to help you find her. I know, Jeremy, I know. Like I said, I didn't want to burden you guys with my problems. My sister's not the only reason I'm here. Furball origin story, let's go! <laughs> Alrighty. As some of you may already know, my name is Jen Moonwinter. Moonwinter, 19 years old, Arcanist. Arcanist? Properly known as Moongazer. That is correct. I study and practice everything that is connected to the arcane. The source of all arcane is the humble moon. Moonwinter? Wait a second. You come from the frozen lands? Yes, home sweet home. Hmm. It does explain the extra fluffiness. But wait, that's really far away. What makes you think your sister is here? The blood rose. The what now? A mythical plant. A special type of rose with very strange properties. What does that have to do with anything? Maybe a bit out of con context from my side. Hey, remember when we said we... When, when we picked Jin up? You mentioned that studying the blood rose? Me and Jin and Camilla have been studying the forest shrine for some time now from different perspectives. It is believed that the origin of the blood rose is right here in the forest. And what better way to study the thing than the source? The question is, how is your sister connected to the blood rose? Jin looks at the tiny locket. The blood rose is after her. Or the other way around. Picked up her scent not long ago. Tonika is definitely here. She's close. Tonika? Wait a second. Jin and Tonika? Our parents like to drink a lot. <laughs> Jin and Tonic. Hita looks at the ground and clenches her fist. Liked, huh? Jin? Yeah, liked. Jin pulls the tiny locket closer to himself. I come from a place with very little vegetation. The closest rose beds are hundreds of miles away. One morning, she was just gone. The only thing left in her room were rose petals. Every couple of weeks, on the Great White Plains, a few rose petals will appear. Been chasing these petals ever since. Few things cut as deeply as winter winds, but those scenes always looked like a trail of blood. I failed. Jin looks at the tiny locket. I'm sorry. Jin looks at everyone while wiping a few runaway tears. That's why I don't tell you this to this anyone. Just makes the people around me sad. Jin. It's alright. Thank you for telling us. Don't worry. I'll be fine. Ada throws some spare firewood at Hid's Jin. Jeremy and Moxie let it look at Ada and gasp in shock for real this time. Meowsers, that hurt. Miss Ada. Whoa, take it easy. Ada, have you lost your... Get up. I'm sorry, Miss Ada. I didn't mean to. I said get up. Jeez, Ada, relax. Jeremy places his hand on Moxie's shoulder and pulls her back. Paper boy? Trust Ada. Don't. She tries to hurt him. Then we intervene. You're right. You failed to protect your sister, and you have the audacity to cry? Moxie stomps the ground and tries to speak up. Moxie, don't. Hey, what's wrong with showing how you feel? Ada turns to Moxie with murderous intent. He. Crying is a sign of weakness. Weakness is a disease that lies in everyone, myself included. Ada turns to Jen. What I hate most is weakness in others. It's a disease that strips you of your full potential. Are you listening for a ball? Yes, ma'am. A plant. Some stupid catnip is making a fool out of you. It took your sister away from you. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to find my sister. Find. Save. Can't hear you. I'm going to save my sister. Now go. Thank you, Miss Ada. Uh-oh. Is this him? Yeah, this is him. You're coming with us. Help! Stranger danger! Jin! Furball! Oh man, he's gonna need a lot of work. Paperboy, I recognize those pixies. They work at the camp. 
We need to make another detour. The fastest way to the camp is to the minimum roads. Let's go. Ruza too. Hmm. Oh no. Sister? Damn it, you persistent little furball. But do you care so much? Hmm. Also, is that how Moxie walks? Jesus fucking Christ. That is insane. Also really cool. I guess let's go. Might as well, right? How much do we have until we, uh... Until we level up? Two XP points. I see. I don't actually want to fight anything right now. What is happening here? What did I say about drinking on guard duty? If I catch you all one more time, then ten, it's ten laps around the camp for everyone. Now for you, I heard you caused some trouble at the pub. What are you working for, furball? Maybe, got, maybe now is not the... Nobody, ma'am. Just wanted to drink some tea. Pixies and nymphs let out a collective chuckle. A comedian, huh? Hibiscus, what's going on? Jeremy, thank goodness you're here. Please, talk sense into... Moxie? Why aren't you at your post? Hibiscus glances at the party that greets Moxie with a strict gaze. Moxie, what did I tell you about bringing outsiders to the camp at a time like this? These are not outsiders, Hibiscus. There, enough. I don't have time for your games. But get out of my camp, you rabble. Out, out! I'll put a cork in it, Hibisca. Pixies and nymphs let out a collective gasp. What are you doing here, there, Furball? She started yelling and I got scared, so I stood in line. Get over here before I lose my patience. Meowser, yeah, sorry, big axe lady, but Miss Seda is scarier. Hibisca averts her bloodthirsty eyes towards Aza. Ada. What? This is the famous Hibisca? This your squadron? A bunch of thieves and drunkards? Pathetic. You. Guys, we don't have time for. You insolent rabble! Resorting to corporal punishment to this camp. The pixies and nymphs let out a collective gulp. Hibiska, please listen to- and What better way to set an example than to destroy a group of filthy outsiders? No fighting! Oh, she's tough. Shit. Alright then. She is definitely chaotic. Actually, she might be lawful, but let's do the strength for sure. Guard. God damn. Let's see now. What are we gonna do here? Probably, probably lawful. Laws and rules, right? Three life skill. Yep, lawful. No one takes damage here, so. Flash fog. Man, there's a lot of things I have. What's the one I have most of? Band aid, I see. Let's put here... probably physical. Missed. You know, let's, let's do a... Let's do a throwing knife, probably. Because actually, you do got a lot of damage. Why, why would I do a throwing knife here? Do physical, though, right? Yeah. Fake bones. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Three red oh my god. That's gonna be a tough one to break. You're definitely insane. No? That's surprising, honestly. Um let's do this, ignore. Then rational probably. Emotional, really. Greedy with life still. You do throwing knife, actually. Focus. Only one bleed, that's it. Uh oh. 
far for attacking coming, I think. Is what that means. Internal and different internal. Influencing the, the outer world. There we go. Okay. It's not too bad. Still do doable with. Focus. And then let me try and get rational. No, it doesn't matter. We did it though. Mint tea. And we got level 8. Not bad. Let's finish this. Ibisca. Gorilla? What did I say last time? No fighting. But... But... Moxie started it. That's not fair, Hibisca. Don't shift the blame on Moxie. Hehe. <laughs> Busted. Moxie, is this true? Are you causing trouble again? Ah, oh, enough. You try embarrassing, embarrassing Moxie in front of her friends. Oh yeah? What are you gonna do about it? <laughs> That's it. Moxie will... Moxie will never talk to you two again. Wow. You sure showed them, Moxie. What the? Moxie, please no. We're sorry. <laughs> no way. This is such power. Sisters are usually hate each other's guts. I still don't understand how those three... Sisters? Aww. Those three are sil silver Drew sisters. Ibisca's the strongest, Camilla's the smartest, and Moxie, well, is Moxie. Moxie, let Big Sis hug you. No, you had your chance. People, we don't have time for this. Camilla gives Ibisca a small piece of paper. What's this? Camilla, go away from me in the office. I'll be with you shortly. Yes, ma'am. Something wrong? Listen, Moxie, I have important work to do. Just don't start any more trouble, right? Hey, Hibisca, if I may interject, I think we all started on the wrong foot here. From the sound of things, you could use some help. Would you mind if we talk for a moment? Hibisca shifts her gaze towards Jeremy. It must be the scribe Moxie mentioned. Hibisca, she told me a lot about you. Hibisca, don't you dare! Moxie puffs up and stares at Hibisca. You know what? She's right about you. You do look kinda cute. Hibisca! <laughs> Pipe down, you little weasel. The fact that we all met, we, we, he, the, the fact that he's well mannered is more important to me. <laughs> Tell Moxie she's cute too. Yeah, I want to see Ada's reaction. Jeremy leans closer to Moxie and whispers, "Don't worry, Moxie. I think you're cute too." What? Uh huh? Can you repeat that a, a bit louder, please? I want everyone to hear. Don't push your luck, Moxie. Hmm. I guess desperate times call for desperate measures. Meet me at my office. It's up at the big staircase. It's the big staircase in the pub. Ah, in the pub. Right. What an office. So, what do we do now? Same thing we always do when Hibiscus now around. A short introduction between the party and some pleasantries. After a short introduction between the party and some pleasantries, Hibiscus speaks up. Alright, let's keep this short and to the point. I went to record a mission. I, I went on a recon mission to confirm Camilla's recent research. It seems the Blood Rose is acting up again. We need to secure the local outpost and start placing more flourish shines to ward it off. Pinewood sector to the northeast has been completely overrun at this point. The speed at which the blood rose is spreading roots is ten times faster than usual. If my research is correct, there has to be an anomaly that's pr uh, speeding up the per speed. Jeremy, you helped me a lot in the past, and I'm in your debt. Camilla scratches her head, trying to say something. I really need your help. The forest is in grave danger of dying out. Regarding your research on the ancient shrine, you're the most qualified for the job. It's most likely a structural, a structural anomaly. Look at the source and try to recover any samples you think are important. I know I'm asking a lot. If you under I understand if you refuse to- Camilla, you can always count on me. What are, the what are friends for? Really? Thank you, Jeremy. How can I ever repay you? Well, there's one thing I would like to request from you, Hibisca. Uh, well, I would like for to request from Hibisca. Jeremy leans closer and whispers a couple of sentences to Hibisca. I see. Hey, why are you whisper whispering? Sorry, Moxie. It's just a private matter. Hibisca looks at Ada and shakes her head. Of course. Why would I expect anything else? Why'd you leave the dark ma marshes? What are you up to this time? None of your business. It's my business if you're gonna ruin everything I've built so far. Adolin, I'm warning you. You can shove your warning right up your- Adolin? Don't tell me you know each- you, you two know each other. Oh, I know where I ride. Sadly. Ada, Oxy is shocked and appalled. That's your best friend forever, you didn't tell- Give me a break. 
Moxie, I forbid you to spend any more time with her. Understood? But, but... <clears throat> Pardon me. We will discuss this at a, at, a, at a later time. Jeremy, regarding your issue with Ada, you'll need a combination of brute force and magic. I'll arrange my nymphs to enchant one of my axes in the meantime, but it will take a couple of days. Thank you. I will inform, you, I will inform my lieutenants of the presence. Feel free to rest and refresh yourself at the bar. If you need supplies, talk to the barkeep. I'll make sure you get a discount on the pro on discount price on the merch. Bixies are here, always snooping around. They might give you inf useful info regarding your mission. The gate leading to Pinewood is open now. Good luck. Jeremy turns to his party. You guys stay here. I'll be back soon. What? It was fun and games up until this point. If what Camilla says is true, I'm going to be. It's going to be very dangerous. Yeah. No, you're not leaving without me. I'm not gonna let some stupid weeds ruin my plan. I won't help too. Moxie's going as well. Oh no, you're not Moxie. I forbid you to- Moxie is old enough to do as she wants. Rex Abisca was about to grab Moxie, but Jeremy interjects. Everyone, take it easy. I'm glad you want to join, but this is for your own safety. Moxie handcuffs herself to Jeremy. Moxie, what are you doing? Heh, <laughs> looks like Moxie's going after all. Jin hugs Jeremy. Jeremy, please don't leave without this- Don't leave me with the scary ladies. Ada leans on his shoulder. When are we leaving? Jeremy looks at Abisca. Don't look at me. You have a party to manage. Good luck, Jeremy. Oh, great. Oh, great. A bunch of load lodestone crystals for creating warp points. Oh, I see. Thank you. Thank you for making those on the map because it really does help. Yes? Bought Abisca. Abisca Silver Dew. Captain, first week on company. I'm in charge of this camp and the remaining pixies and nymphs that live here. Remaining. Abisca pauses for a moment and lets out a concerned sigh. You've probably met the des deserters. I'm not going to lie, things don't look peachy so far. Blood Wars may have consumed large parts of the forest. This was supposed to be a research outpost, but recently we converted it to, ma ma to a makeshift barracks. I'm understaffed and running low on supplies, which has dealt a blow to troops' morale. The rest is history. What about other platoons? Why can't they help us? Biska? Moxie, we are the last in our company. Aha, uh -huh, biscuits. Expedition. It wasn't a pretty picture. The west, north, and northeast are completely overrun. My patrols are completely around the- are working around the clock to setting up warding shrines to keep it at bay. We're lucky. Only 10% bloomed, but that might change in an instant. Bloomed? It starts in stages. First you see the dark threads crawling above the ground. Then it starts to take root and multiply, covering all the ground. I suspect that Pinewood is a stage too. So prepare yourself. Once it, ha f one hit once it has firmly taken root, Crimson followers will start to bloom. After that, well... Nobody has left to tell the tale. Oh, I see. Glad we're going to that. I'd rather not. Oh, come on, Hibiska. I'd like to know. Moxie, you can always ask Adeline instead. Ada, can you please- I'd rather not. Oh, come on! Hibiska grabs her chin and lets out a smug- uh, a smug- a smug smirk. There we go. Wait a second. They don't know, do they? Hibiska? You know what? Ada's a big deal. Her family is a part of- Ada slams the table. Choose your words carefully. You're gonna settle this? Ada was about to, to lunge at Hibiska, but Jeremy grabs her. Thank you for your time, Hibiska. We're out of here. Best of luck in Pinewood, Jeremy. Sorry, Jeremy. Can't talk now. I'm in the middle of something. It's fine, but can I take your uh, your stuff? So would I have to go around? No, I can't. Actually, I guess I just can't. The still tomes won't stay on floors for uh, I've seen that before. Alrighty then. Talk to you. Hey, Bisco told me about your quest. Take my arcane ID. Yeah, by the way, sorry for kicking you out. Didn't know tea was banned around here. Banned? Not at all. It's just part of my patron's orders to help. It's just that my patron's orders. The. Oh, wait. It's just that my patrons order the hard stuff most of the time. Two funny outsider comes to come into my pub and order tea. That was a bit sketchy. Can't be too careful the in these trying times. Especially with all the rumors spreading around. Rumors? A lot of weird figures have been popping up around the same time as all the Blood Rose business started. Actually, you're the second cat in the last couple of days. Jin freezes in place. Wait, what do you mean? Yeah, she bought a bottle of moonshine and fell asleep near the fireplace. After a few hours. Left after a few hours, didn't say anything to other, other than ordering some food to take out. Don't get your hopes up for a ball. I thought that's your little... Miss Seda, it is her. Moonshine is our favorite drink. What the? How old is your sister? A whole bottle? Just one bottle? Psst. That's nothing. Please, you gotta tell me more. Where'd she go? 
Don't know. Don't like to pry, especially when it comes to outsiders. Just left after after a few hours. That's all I know. Thank you, nonetheless. Jeremy places his hand on Jin's shoulder. Huh? Don't worry, Jin. This is good news. At least we know your sister. The sister is alive and well. We just need to find her. That's all. Thanks, Jeremy. Feel free to rest at the pub. I've informed the pixies and nymphs that you are not a threat. If you're looking to some, for some extra cash, talk to the treasure hunter over there. She's always had odd jaws, but they play a pay well. Now, if you would excuse me, I have a pub to run. Yeah, so you gave me your ID thing, right? Let's see here. Where's some um, damage stuff? There's damage. There's also damage. That's damage. That's good damage. This is better damage. This is the good damage. Hmm. Drains the enemy stamina and transfers it to the user. Gives the user strength just by holding it. Yeah, I see that. We'll buy this. Oh, just... Just a bit of damage. Why not make everyone just damage? Complete damage. Why not just do that, huh? Sure, if there's ever a point where I need to heal, I'll change up my points. But for now, I just need to deal damage most of the time. Alright, everyone's out of points. Good. And now we just... Dude, damage points. 15, there we go. Let's do a bit of damage over time, I guess. Actually, no. We do more defense and attack. And uh, no, and speed. Then Ada, you go with the same thing. And then damage. Same with you, but you also need a bit of attack, I think. There we go. And you also need a bit of defense, so... There we go. You all deal 15 damage now, which is, you know, a decent chunk, in my opinion. Hey, Bisco told me about your mission. I have some info that might help you. Probably heard the rumors about the weird figures popping up. Turns out they're trying to fi find something, and oftentimes they set up camp for a few hours. They can seal their tracks with vegetation, but sometimes they slip up and leave some of the gear behind. Just yesterday, I found a small cache full of gold coins. Fix your razors of grass and put it to good use, eh? <laughs> Thanks for the info. No problem. Visibly drunk Pixie is talking to herself. Are you alright? Just peachy. First the rumors, now the blood rose. Well, at least I'll die doing what I love. What do you love? Dying. Great. Psst. Hey, you, big boy. Come over here for a second. You look like the adventurous type. What do you say? Are you down for some treasure hiding? Not only I pay you. Not only will I pay you, we can split the treasure, deal? What's the catch? We need to go underground. The abandoned abandoned mines. Here's the plan. I'll give you the key to the, the first elevator. Go down and clear the path. Be careful. There will probably be competition snooping around there. At least I get to waste some fools. Sounds good to me. According to this old map, there are two elevators on the first level. First one is at the end of the hallway, which leads to the lower levels. Second one is the minecart storage room. That's the jackpot. Once you clear the any blockades, call me. This one's gonna be tough, but I think I can crack it with open with my lockpicking tools. Alright, got yourself a deal. Moxie scratches her head trying to say something. The mines, huh? Isn't that place kinda haunted? Don't worry, it's an old way of wives tale. You'd be fine. Moxie, don't tell me you're afraid of the dark. <laughs> don't be silly. Moxie is just worried about you guys. <laughs> I'll cast some fire for torches, don't worry. Please make an extra bite, thank you. One question. Why does the map see the lower levels? It says here that the elevator is locked by an old mechanism. See this? I don't understand the scribbles. Must be some sort of ancient scripture. Leads to a chamber with a giant question mark drawn on it right here. Do you mind if I take this piece of map? Will, I'll return it once we're done. Because he hands him a piece of map to, over to Jeremy. Sure, keep it if you want. Had a hunch you'd be interested in the other stuff. If you ask me, I had to steer clear of the sketchy business. I'm just here for the treasure. Hold on, you keep saying treasure, but what kind of treasure are we talking about here? Gold? Gems? Pixie pauses for a moment and lets out a smug grin. Berries. You gotta be joking, right? These aren't your ordinary berries. They're the fabled frozen berries. They grow only when temperature drops to a certain threshold. 
Since the forest is, is usually usually has mild winters, they pop up every couple of years. It is said they have a strong medicinal properly property. Have the sweetest taste of all the forest fruits. These beauties sell for 100 gold per berry. Or 100 gold coins per berry. You heard that right? Per berry. Maybe Camilla was right. We should get into gardening. Alright, are we all ready? Here, take the key in the fir for the first elevator. I need, to, I need you to get some gear in the meantime. Call me when you clear the path. Good luck. God, that's a lot of reading to do when I'm tired. Um, it's not exactly helpful. Growing knives, right. Man, my throat is kind of tired at this point. Oh wow, this place looks nice. No need to restore the party, right? I don't think so. Might as well. I don't know what the shield means. What does the shield mean? We have like a little shield icon next to uh, next to our stuff in the menu. Oh, 20, 20, 20, 20. Is that the... No, I don't know what that is. Maybe that's healing. Maybe that's... I have no clue. Might be hit points or something. I have no idea. Jamie's house. Mine key. Okay, cool. We're over here, okay. To our very naughty boys, you can't just peep like that. Pardon us, it was an accident. If you want to use the hot springs, you can. You just need to make reservations ahead of time. You can even order entertainment if you so choose. Nims look at Jeremy and Winks. You'd be more than happy to. Hide and seek if you want to manage to, if you manage to find us. You can do whatever you want. Sounds like party games. I love party games. No, you don't. But we're leaving now. Yeah, looks at Jeremy lost in, lost in his thoughts. You're seriously considering this? I'm thinking about the logistics. How would hide and seek work in such a confined space? That's the thing. It doesn't. The nymph blows him a kiss and giggles. Right. Oh, we just have the entire text again. Alright. No, I was just interested, you know. No reason, really. But just... I, I want to go in, you know? It's just... That simple. What's going on over here? Hey, what's up? Let me introduce you to... Ah, it's her again. What do you want now? Just wanted you to meet my new friend. Listen, Moxie, we don't care. Yeah, you're a real pain in the neck. Moxie turns to Jeremy, Ada, and Jin. Hehe, <laughs> they're just joking. One of the pixies throws an empty bottle and hits Moxie. Ouchie, that hurt. Get out of here, you loser. Yeah, get into your thick skulls already. Nobody likes you, Moxie. Nobody wants to be your friend, so stop bothering us. Even those who like you, see otherwise behind your back. Defend Moxie, yeah, sure. Hey, what's wrong with you two? Is this how you treat a fellow pixie? You ladies should be ashamed of it. You ladies should be ashamed of yourselves. Paper boy, it's all right. No, Moxie, it's not. Not everyone deserves respect, but each living thing deserves dignity. Scribe, what are you gonna do? Read me a bedtime story? Pixie spirit. This pixie spirit in front of Jeremy. Unless it shows no dignity itself. Jeremy turns to Ada and whispers a few words. Seriously? You're giving me the honor? Jeremy nods. Ada looks at the pixie and cracks her knuckles. Nerd, I might just start to like you. It's two heavy punches, and they're gone. Man, seeing those lowlifes flying never gets old. Jeremy places his hand on Ada's shoulder. I'm sorry you have to deal- Oh, and Mo Moxie's shoulder, actually. I'm sorry you had to deal with that, Moxie. Don't worry. If anyone ever says something like that to you again, just call me. Moxie covers her face and looks away. There, there. It's alright. Inner Moxie- <laughs> Inner Moxie log. I can't believe it. He stood up for me. My knight in shiny armor. Is this a dream? Wait, 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 wait. Does he really like me? What do I do? What do I say? He really likes me. Haha. Ah. Incredible, isn't it? Simply incredible dialogue. <sighs> hey, you. Mind helping me out? What's wrong? There's a big thunderstorm, uh, thunderstorm a couple of days ago. It's the prime condition for the red cap mushrooms. I've been dying to do some research on them, but I have a lot of work to do here at the camp. Also, Ibisco will scold me if I leave my post to pick, to pick mushrooms. Bring me a bunch, I'll give you 10 gold coins and a couple of medicinal items I've crafted. These red caps, are they edible? Yeah, they're pretty tasty. Paper boy, Moxie approves of, of this mission. So, will you help me? Sure, why not? Alright, how many things do you have now? Oh shit. Side objectives. Pixie has lost her friends, says to search the forest and try and find them. Uh, secret stashes in the forest. A berries. A vault in the lower levels. Nymph researchers needs mushrooms. Okay, that's quite a lot of them. 
Wait, you know what? I am quite out of time. I've been enjoying this game, though. I will say that. It is really good. I really do like it. Right. I do love how Moxie, like, moves around. It's lovely. Stupid, as always. Uh, but I am going to leave it here. So, if you enjoyed this episode, leave it a like. Have an awesome day. And I'll see you tomorrow.